Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Gotta Wander. For those who don't know, my name is Paul, and I document my travel adventures, which encompasses everything from sports stadiums, train trips, ski resorts, and solo camping, to visiting picturesque mountain villages and reviewing popular tourist spots, while, of course, trying the local beverages and food these places have to offer along the way. Take a look at my channel after this video, as there is sure to be lots of videos that suits your own interests. All that being said, this video will be the first of a new series and playlist, where I will be traveling to and staying in some very, very quirky accommodations in some very interesting locations. Join me as I head on the first of many unique stays, beginning with an overnight break in this lovely little vessel here. Let's take a wander, shall we? Today I am in Sheffield in the UK, famous for its steel production in the 19th century. The steel city also has an affinity with the beautiful game, football or soccer depending on where you're watching this video from. I'm here for a football game, a video which can also be found on my channel or in the description below. However, I am also visiting to try out a very unique stay tonight, which you got a sneak peek of during the intro. To get here, I flew into Manchester Airport this morning from Ireland. Manchester Airport is by far the easiest option to visit Sheffield if travelling from abroad, but the airports in Leeds, Birmingham and Liverpool also have train connections to the city. From Manchester Airport, I hopped on a train to Manchester Piccadilly Station, which was a quick 20 minute journey, just enough time to enjoy some lunch and boost those energy levels. Once I arrived in Manchester Piccadilly, I had about an hour wait until my next train to Sheffield. This was no hardship as the main hall in Manchester Piccadilly is a real beauty and there is lots of shops, cafes and restaurants to pass the time. After hanging out with my buddy here, before I knew it, I was boarding my East Midlands train bound for Nottingham. This service stops at Sheffield less than an hour after departure. This rail journey was short but extremely memorable and I strongly recommend taking this mode of transport if you can because you travel through the stunning Peak District National Park where you can sit back and enjoy its scenic landscapes and pass by many quaint little rural villages and towns on the way. And just like that, here I was at Sheffield train station which in my opinion would provide any visitor, not only me, a positive first impression of the city. It's a gorgeous old building in a modern world setting and the landscaping outside just adds to its curb appeal. You could take a taxi or bus from here to Victoria Keys which is the location of my lodging tonight but I believe walking is the best way to explore a new place so I set off on foot. After a nice easy stroll 15 minutes later, I found the place. Victoria Keys, originally named the Sheffield Canal Basin. It's a lovely complex with a mix of old warehouse buildings and houses with their red brick facades. I was on foot, of course, but if you're staying in my accommodation and bring in the car, a code to open the barrier at the front will be provided to you by the hosts. Victoria Keys was originally constructed and opened between the years of 1814 and 1890 and served as an important cargo port for the city until 1970 when it ceased operation, mainly due to the improved road and railway network which made transporting goods via the canal largely obsolete. The Keys received a huge facelift in the 1990s, restoring the warehouses and adding new buildings. The buildings and the old railway bridge were repurposed into offices, cafes and restaurants, giving this side of the city a new lease of life and a place to socialise for local residents and tourists alike. 
In particular, I loved this curved terrace of coal merchants' houses, which are now used as offices. Another addition was the creation of a marina, providing berths for leisure canal boats. And that's where I will be resting my head tonight, on the canal itself, in one of these houseboats. This is the lovely lady in question. Her name is Leila May, a 42 foot long and 10 foot wide narrow boat. Right beside her is her sister, Millie Grace, an identical narrow boat in terms of size. Both are available to rent from the company Houseboat Hotels. Not sponsored, but I will put the link in the description below if anyone is interested. As you step into the canopy, there is a small seating area for two, overlooking the canal basin. It's a self-check-in, which is great. You simply type in the code in the lockbox here, and you get your boat keys. Let's take a look inside this unique stay. This boat is pretty awesome. Both the Leila May and Millie Grace can accommodate up to four adults nightly, while children under the age of 14 can stay for free. There's plenty of sleeping options available, with a double bedroom at the rear of the cabin, two bunk beds in the corridor, while in the galley, the dining area can convert to a double bed, and the sofa can also be turned into a bed as well. You have a full kitchen available to cook in, with a gas hob and under counter fridge with bottled water, along with all the utensils, cutlery, plates, bowls and cups that you would need. The overnight rate also includes this hospitality tray containing teas, coffees, milk and biscuits. I checked in at 2.30 p.m. so I spent the next few hours enjoying the houseboat. I sat outside watching the world go by both on and off the water. With it being a weekday and early afternoon, it was very tranquil here. My ideal spot. One negative however was that the host did foil my attempt to take the houseboat out on a joyride down the canal. <laughs> Damn! I also relaxed inside reading a book at the dining table for a bit, enjoying the peace and quiet. And I also caught up on some quality daytime TV for a while. Both the couch and the dining area were very comfortable. And before I knew it, it was quarter to five. Time for me to get my skates on and head to Hillsborough for a Sheffield Wednesday game. You can watch that match day video on my channel by clicking on the top right of your screen now or click the link in the description below. And while you're at it, you may as well hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It's free to do, but this action will really help me create more content going forward. You may also like to support the coffee donation fund to keep me caffeinated on my journeys. Take a look at the God of Wander merch shop online or send me a super thanks comment under this video or any video of mine that you may have enjoyed in particular.
I reply to 100% of the genuine comments I receive because I like to keep in touch and chat with all of you who take the time to watch my videos. Self promotion over, let's get back to the video. After watching a really enjoyable game of football, I made my way back to Victoria Keys. I was tired after an early start that morning, so could not wait to jump into bed as the captain of my very own ship. And there she is, right where I left her. This houseboat looks so cosy at night. Maybe I will stay up just a little bit longer. I'm always hungry later at night. Is anybody else the same? Let me know in the comments below. Ten past eleven on a weekday? Yeah, definitely time to hit the hay. I'm going to put the head down here, get a few hours sleep, all going well. This houseboat truly is a unique stay. I'm really glad I did it. You can hear the sounds of the ropes, the canopy at the back of the boat where you enter. That's quite noisy. Sometimes it even seems like there's someone coming in, <laughs> but there's not. Um, just just uh, something that you need to get used to. But no, everything's been top notch. Just watching the rock here on the TV now. In the morning, it's supposed to be raining, so what I'll probably do is run out, grab some breakfast and bring it back here. Enjoy the houseboat some more, spend as much time as I can on here before I need to check out at 11. So, hope you enjoyed it so far. Gonna hit the hay now, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Good night. Good morning. It wasn't a great morning as expected. Overcast and rainy. But I decided I wanted to go for a jog to explore the Keys and the canal a little bit further before breakfast. My jog along the canal gave me the briefest of insights into the might of Sheffield's industrial past, which once could be called the steel-making capital of the world.
Whew. Well, that was a nice run, but I got absolutely soaked. So, time for a shower. Let's get a bit more light coming in here. Beautiful English autumn day this morning. Definitely be staying here until checkout. <laughs> Alright, feeling nice and refreshed after the shower. Now it's time to head out and face the rain again and serve some breakfast. Let's go. Thankfully for me, there was a cafe only a few doors up from the houseboat. Victoria Junction Cafe, one of many commercial premises built into the old railway bridge arches. Very cool. This place must be buzzing on a summer weekend. I got my breakfast to go, so I could enjoy the houseboat further before I had to check out. The breakfast of champions for me this morning. Sausages and rashers in a fresh flowery bath, accompanied with a cappuccino, of course. Overall, it was a lovely peaceful breakfast. Enjoying my hot coffee while watching the rain pouring down outside. Hearing the raindrops hit the water in the canal was very soothing at that moment. I did my very best to shelter from the rain as long as I could, taking it easy on this fabulous boat for a little while longer. But checkout time soon comes to us all, and it was time to take my leave. Who would want to stay in a hotel on land, when you can stay in a hotel on water? I really hope you enjoyed this unique stay, and there's plenty more to come. So once again, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video. That's all for now folks, I'll catch you on my next wander.